The Yaya Torre goal in the FA Cup final the previous summer effectively ripped the banner from Old Trafford which countered Manchester City's 35 years without a major trophy. The previous title City had won was in the 1976 League Cup final in a 2-1 win over Newcastle United. In 2012, Roberto Mancini had snapped up the likes of Sergio Aguero and Edin Dzeko. They had crashed out of their first Champions League campaign and fallen 8 points behind their fiercest rivals across town with just 6 matches in the league remaining. City ran through West Brom, Norwich, Wolves without a hiccup, Aguero scoring his 22nd league goal of the season in the final match. In the meantime, United had lost at Wigan and surrendered a 2 goal lead at Old Trafford to Everton. The 8 point gap was now 3, with just 3 matches remaining. Due to City's superior goal difference, a win would put City back on top of the pile in what would turn out to be the tightest Premier League title race in history. Cut to a Vincent Company header on the stroke of half time, the title swung in City's direction. Level on 83 points with 2 games to go, both teams had to go to the North East and play host to a bottom half team. There were just 8 goals between the two sides. Matching 2-0 wins for the two title chasers meant that United needed a slip up from Manchester City going into the final day where they hosted QPR, who in turn needed a win to ensure that they staved off relegation. Wade Rooney scored 20 minutes in at the Stadium of Light to force City's hand, but just as throughout the season, City replied in kind through Pablo Zabaleta. The feeling around both stadiums was that another Manchester City goal would seal the first league title for the blue half of Manchester since 1968. A crazy 18 minutes at the Etihad Stadium saw Jibril Cissé equalise, but then Joey Barton getting himself sent off only for Jamie Mackey to flip the game on its head. 2-1. City were bottling it again. They had 24 minutes to score twice and salvage their third league title, whilst ensuring that United didn't win their 20th. Two of Mancini's signings would decide the destiny of the Premier League title. Edin Dzeko got an equaliser on 90 minutes before the full-time whistle blew on United's campaign in Sunderland. United had done all they had to. They were left stood on the Stadium of Light Turf, awaiting whispers from the crowd. Then Mario Balotelli gave Sergio Aguero the ball on the edge of the QPR box, and now Manchester City are the fifth most valuable football team on the planet. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly, and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... Sergio Aguero missed the 90th minute chance against Queen's Park Rangers. Edin Dzeko slotted in an equaliser on 90 minutes. The full-time whistle sounds off in Sunderland to signify Manchester United's 1-0 win. They had finished on 89 points. The game at the Etihad ticked over into stoppage time. City was still on 87. Mario Balotelli, with his back to goal, gave Sergio Aguero the ball, who rode a tackle in the box when he could have gone down. 94th minute. One final chance to win the Premier League with the last kick of the game. Aguero fired his right boot through the ball. It rippled the net the outside of the net. The final whistle blew, Manchester United claimed their 20th English title and with that Sir Alex Ferguson announced his retirement a few days later. On the other side of town Manchester City were also on the hunt for a new manager after giving Roberto Mancini the chop after a trophyless season. The race was on to sign the biggest manager to their club. As Chelsea toiled to their first Champions League final win over Bayern in Munich, the higher ups at Old Trafford and the Etihad funneled through their potential managerial candidates. Pep Guardiola was on a sabbatical in New York. Jose Mourinho had just signed a four-year deal at Real Madrid after winning the La Liga. Carlo Ancelotti was just a season into his run with PSG. Jurgen Klopp was happy at Borussia Dortmund. Louis van Gaal was available. Just 24 hours prior to Bert van Marwijk's Netherlands loss to Denmark in Kharkiv at Euro 2012, Manchester United agreed terms with Louis van Gaal. Upon the Netherlands group stage elimination, Ruud Hullet was announced as a manager for the Dutch national side. Manchester City, meanwhile, spent the remainder of Euro 2012 searching for their new manager. Manuel Pellegrini had opted to stay with Malaga ahead of their first Champions League campaign, Max Allegri was sticking with AC Milan, as was Marcelo Bielsa at Athletic Bilbao, and Diego Simeone at Atletico Madrid. Three options remained at Eastlands. Unai Emery and Luis Enrique, who were jobless after respective roles at Valencia and Roma, but City passed on both options. In the Manchester City dugout for the opening day win over Southampton was instead David Moyes. The night after, Unai Emery would take to the Goodison Park dugout in a goalless draw against Van Gaal's Manchester United. Nine months later, after a horrific season, Manchester City finished in 6th place. David Moyes, after a 3-0 loss away at Swansea on May 4th, 2013, was sacked. Meanwhile, Lou Van Gaal's Manchester United secured their 21st league title with a home win over Rafael Benitez's Chelsea. 
Arsene Wenger's Arsenal, Andre Villas-Boas' Tottenham and LMA Manager of the Year Unai Emery's Everton made up the Champions League spots. Emery, much revered at Goodison, mainly for pipping Liverpool to fourth and a little bit for winning the FA Cup, their first trophy since 1995. Emery fell to the same fate of David Moyes in 2005 in that Everton were defeated in Champions League qualification, this time by Fenerbahce. David Moyes was replaced by Espanyol's Mauricio Pochettino, but City finished sixth once more. The gap to their Manchester rivals was not 27 points as the season previously, but three points as United fell to fifth place. Jose Mourinho had returned to the Premier League and beat Arsene Wenger to the Premier League on the final day. Liverpool and Everton rounded off the teams qualified for the Champions League for the 2014-15 season. It was a rare summer devoid of the ever-changing managerial merry-go-round in the top six of the Premier League. Mourinho led Chelsea to a second successive Premier League title. City's loyalty to Pochettino was rewarded as he put the pressure on Chelsea's title bid, albeit City would miss out on the title by 11 points. Arsenal, as was to be expected, solidified a Champions League place under Wenger, whilst Luis Enrique's first season at Spurs improved them from 6th to 4th. In the Champions League, Everton were England's flagship club, being the only English team left in the quarter-finals. However, they were beaten 2-0 on aggregate by Juventus. They would, due to focus on Europe, finish 9th and would stick by Unai Emery, but they wouldn't return to top 6 under his management. Those in 5th and 6th, Manchester United and Liverpool, would be the only ones to change management at the end of the season. Liverpool opted for a return in Rafael Benitez as their first choice. Jurgen Klopp was chosen to succeed Louis van Gaal at Old Trafford. Benitez's return kept hold of Raheem Sterling whilst Jurgen Klopp brought in Roberto Firmino to Old Trafford from Hoffenheim to replace Wayne Rooney up top. These were inspired choices as Manchester United won their 22nd league title, Firmino top scoring with 21 league goals. City and Tottenham both eliminated by Real Madrid as they strolled to yet another Champions League return for the following season's competition. Mourinho beating Rafa Benitez to fourth spot, but it was not enough for Mourinho to keep his job at Stamford Bridge. The summer of 2016 brought along the great managerial reshuffle at the top of the Premier League. Wenger, despite an FA Cup win, was pushed out of the door at the Emirates, replaced by Pep Guardiola. Mourinho moved on fast from Chelsea, moving across London to Tottenham. Antonio Conte joined Chelsea, whilst Mauricio Sarri took the reins at Liverpool after a disastrous return from Benitez. The first of those appointments, Guardiola to Arsenal, would prove to be the most important switch of the decade. Even after a groundbreaking £100 million transfer of Raheem Sterling from Liverpool to the Emirates in the same summer, Guardiola also brought in Leroy Sané to Arsenal and would take the Gunners close to a first league title in 13 years. Jurgen Klopp, as he did in Germany with Borussia Dortmund, inspired his side to a second successive league title as Manchester United won a fourth league title in six years. Mourinho was refreshed at White Hart Lane, despite a last 16 defeat against Atletico in Europe. He took Spurs to a third place in the league. Real Madrid would take two English scalps, Manchester's United and City, in the Champions League yet again, on their way to a 12th Champions League title. Manchester City would finally lose patience with Mauricio Pochettino, bringing in Thomas Tuchel in the summer of 2017 after another disappointing 6th place finish. Tuchel was able to persuade Jadon Sancho to stay on, and set about a brand of youth football at the Etihad replacing David Silva with Phil Foden. City would not be back in the Champions League the following season however, pipped on goal difference by Mourinho's Tottenham. Antonio Conte ensured another season in the Champions League for Chelsea and took them into the final of the Champions League, England's first team in a European final since 2012, but Real Madrid romped to a 13th Champions League title. Despite all of this, however, Conte was sacked and Chelsea played a staggering £30 million to price Thomas Tuchel away from the Etihad. Tuchel would apply his brand of attacking youthful football to a team with a bloated youth squad in the crosshairs of a transfer ban. Guardiola would create history with an open checkbook, hitting a century of points in a superb two years for Arsenal where they captured the Premier League before a League Cup and Champions League treble in 2019. In the meantime, Jurgen Klopp's Manchester United would firmly become the second place stalwarts, losing the aforementioned Champions League final to Arsenal on penalties. Klopp vs Guardiola would become the new Wenger vs Ferguson in the Premier League era. Let's take it to the winners and losers merry-go-round. Arsenal winners because they ended their Premier League drought after 14 years with a century of points thanks to Pep Guardiola. Oh, and they won a Champions League. Manchester City losers because after all this time they're still waiting for that first league title since 1968. Everton winners because they broke into the top four finally. Manchester United winners because post Sir Alex Ferguson there was actually a plan and three league titles thanks to Louis van Gaal and Jurgen Klopp as well as several long runs in the Champions League. This video was made as part of the What If Football launch day. 
Each week, starting from Monday morning, a new scenario will be published right here on YouTube.